So today we have Ampex Brands, who, based in Richardson, Texas, who is the new owner of Au Bon Pain, in addition to being a very large franchise operator of several brands, and they'll tell you about that in just a minute. We have Tabassum Mumtaz, who is the CEO of Ampex Brands, and we have Erica Garza, who is the new president of Au Bon Pain. Welcome and thank you both for taking the time to talk with me today. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So really, this is meant to be an introduction to Ampex Brands uh, in a way, but you guys have been around for a while and, and have, I think, 400, 600 restaurants. Um, Tabassum, tell us a little bit about what you've been doing and your operation. Uh, first of all, Lisa, thank you again uh, for uh, doing this. And also, when you say the new owners, I think uh, <clears throat> I just want to say that uh, the Auburn Pond team has been there for so long and such a great team. To me, honestly, that team is the real owner of the brand. Uh, we just happen to be a part of that transaction, and we are now, uh, yes, owning Aubon Pan as Ampex Brands. So again, I mean, you know, I, I have the utmost respect for the team when we met the team over there, and we simply think that really that is the real owners. But going back to Ampex Brands, we fo founded Ampex Brands in 2005, uh, we started that with uh, being young franchisees, which uh, I'm uh, very thankful of as young brands, franchisee of KFC's, Pizza Hut's, Taco Bell's, and at the time it was Long John Silver's. <clears throat> so I think uh, from 2005 till now, with some acquisitions and organic growth, new store development, uh, we came up to somewhere around 400 plus units on uh, young brands, and we also have 7-Elevens on uh, top of that as well. Um, looking at uh, Ampex brands today versus Ampex brands when we just started, uh, I honestly think it's the team that we were blessed with to acquire and build and grow along with the line and the time that we are today as. So uh, it's all about how the team kept on helping us growing. So Ampex Brands to me is all about the team. So what, what possessed you to do this and, and why in this segment in particular, Bakery Cafe? I think uh, one, I always connected with the uh, Oban Pond. I mean, you know, I think when I look at uh, uh, the food, when I look at the quality of the product, when I look at the team from the beginning, every time I've visited Oban Pond, no matter whether it's an airport or a hospital, I've always had a pleasant experience. And when the opportunity came, and on top of that, it was a good buy for us, it was a good mix for us, uh, definitely there was, it was a no-brainer. Erica, I'm going to bring you in here a little bit to see if you sure. can tell us about what the, what the first step is, now what the plans are. I understand first you're going to be looking at the existing cafes, is that right? That is correct. So as we're speaking, um, I've been uh, I've been on board for about um, 22 days, and I can tell you for the 22 days, you know, um, we set ourselves some serious goals. And part of our goals were first and foremost to understand the business. Secondly, get to know all of our franchisees, and thirdly, and most importantly, get to know all the team members, not only from the restaurant level but from the support center team. Um, so since I've started, I've been in tour. I think I've gone to 40 plus uh, stores in about six different markets and I'm not stopping. I am continuing to meet our franchisees, continue to meet each team member and obviously our support center. Those are the focuses that we have. And then secondly, is also to kind of determine not only from marketing, but our footprints. You know, today we are a traditionally with, in our non-traditional space. We've got plans to expand not only um, more at a global level. So today, you know, we've got 69 units in Thailand. Our plan is to expand to France, Germany, Mexico, and Canada, and so forth. But also to explore different footprints as well. The non-traditional has been great to us, but we're looking forward to whether it's ghost kitchens, whether it's setting ourselves in a different platform, a different look and feel, but also also menu innovation. So there's a there's a lot of things that are currently um, that we're discussing and that we've got obviously as goals. But to start off with, it's just really important for us that we start off with our own teams and our franchisees and, and keep moving forward. And like I said, I'm not stopping. I'm continuing to go on tour and, uh, and do the very best that we can with the new team that has equipped, uh, equipped the business. I want to pull that thread a little bit more. You mentioned ghost kitchens. It sounds like you're looking at different formats 
for Obon Pan that you're in non-traditional already, which must be pretty small units, sometimes without dine-in. Is that right? <coughs> yes and no. So we've got all different types of businesses. We're very fortunate that we are in hospitals, we're in transportations, we are in offices, um, we're in uh, universities and college campuses. But there's opportunity for us that we're looking we're looking at food trucks. We're trying to keep up. We're trying to get ourselves in every business that you can. We're looking at ghost kitchens. In fact, we're looking at opportunities because we've got, um, you know, a business within the business. Catering is very favorable for our type of business throughout the U.S. And so for in order for us to be able to keep up with the demand that we have for those particular kinds of businesses, we find that we need to explore ghost kitchens to be able to support that. And then also for us to obviously keep up with our competitors and to be relevant. But yeah, between food trucks, between um, smaller kiosks and between ghost kitchens, we're looking at all different types of formats as well to expand and to just kind of market and modernize. But most importantly, it's also to capture a different audience. One of the audiences that we find that we've been able to capture, but for about four years are the millennials because we are in universities and we are in colleges. But the question here is what do we do after they graduate, right? Once they graduate, they kind of, it's out of sight, out of mind, the brand, not necessarily because they don't crave or like the product, but it's just not accessible to them. So we're trying to figure out the audience that we do have, how do we keep growing? And then the audience that, um, you know, that we currently do not have right now, how do we capture for them to be more accessible? And we find that food trucks and ghost kitchens, at least today is probably gonna be a good solution for our business. So as we speak, more to come, because we've got some, uh, we've got some great um, things that we've got in planning that will be coming your way. So more to come, and, and that's what I can share today. Is there a chance that you might look for more acquisition at this point? Oh, always looking for acquisitions. You are? Acquisitions bring a big smile on me. 